Well, he says, you know, you know, it's written all over your face. You're afraid of, of going to a seance. But he says, I know you. He says, you're going to come. And uh, then he started to tell me how brave I was when I was aboard ship, you know, <laughs> different things. He says, you're not the same man. You've changed. You're, you're chicken. That's all I needed to hear. I said, when do we go to a seance? So one Saturday evening, we were in the place. It was the very first time. Very beautiful place. The medium was a lady. She had a gorgeous new home in Montreal. And there were about 20 uh, invited guests there, which I was one of them. And uh, she communicated with the spirits for uh, different people there. And they were telling them what the spirit said. One man uh, said, I would like to talk to my friend that died six months ago. But I don't want him to appear. Just want to talk to him. Because he says, I don't trust you talking to my, my friend for me. So the, so the uh, medium says, let me inquire of the spirit. Yeah, the spirit will, will talk with you. And that big masculine voice was heard in the place. It says, hi, Frank. It's nice of you to ask for me to talk with you. And they had a little chat. And after it was over, Frank says, this is the greatest thing honored to be able to talk with the spirits of the dead. Then, this, the medium said, we have a very special surprise tonight for you people. A spirit will manifest itself openly here in a few minutes. And it's right, it's like a big gust of wind hit the building. And right through the wall. And the, the lights were terribly bright, but they, you know, they were like living room lights. A couple of floor lamps and maybe some of these. And that uh, translucent being seemed to come right out of the wall. How did you feel right at that moment? It's almost like my heart stopped a little bit. You know, very weird feeling. So it was a lady in a beautiful evening gown, floor length. And she said to, to Mary, my dear sister, you are so wonderful to have asked for me. And Mary fainted and fell right off her chair on the floor. <laughs> and a couple of guys jumped up and picked her up and uh, it's very gone. And that was the beginning of it. That's how you got into it. Yeah, that's the way we got into it. After a while, you see, <clears throat> there's something interesting about the, the human uh, mind. You can adjust an awful lot of stuff. You can adjust to a lot of things that you, that would terrify you to begin with, after a while they become common and ordinary. Hmm. So you mean contact with the supernatural can become commonplace and ordinary and doesn't bother anybody? Yeah. In other words, the more that you do it, you're not uncomfortable. That's it's right. It's just not yeah. an uneasy feeling. Yeah. So but how then, did you feel about then it? Then I got into a secret society that worshiped the spirits, you see. Well, how did, okay, now how, how is that different from the seance, Roger? It happens that uh, <clears throat> the seance um, are not involving in many ways. But when you get into a secret society of spirit worshippers, then, and especially when you're invited there by the direction of the higher-ups in the spirit world, you never get out of there alive. And it's exactly what my friend and I were up against we didn't know anything about. And uh, there was a very, very popular uh, uh, big band leader. Jazz, jazz, jazz band, yeah, very famous. And uh, one night we went to one of these uh, seances and uh, he was with his wife. So Roger, you're at this restaurant. What happened? We sat there and uh, we had our favorite alcoholic beverages, you know. Uh, and uh, as we talked, uh, <clears throat> The band leader says, he says, I want power, I go right to the source of power. And he says, how do you think that I became famous the way that I am? Well, I said, you must have had some good luck. Well, he says, there's no such thing as good luck. He says, there's either some power working for you somewhere, or you don't get ahead in this world. Not in my, my type of 
occupation. So um, it, it went from there that we went, to, we got talking about uh, spirit worship. Did it intrigue you? Or did it make you want to find out more about what exactly he was talking about? Yeah. So he said the, the supposed spirits of the dead that you're talking with are demon spirits. You're fallen angels. You're beautiful beings. Just set it out, just like Oh, that. yeah. It didn't make you uneasy when he said they were Well, you know, it shocked you a little bit, you know. Something that you first hear uh, uh, mentioned to you. He said, uh, you guys have got a great future ahead of you. Because we've been told, the high priest of our society, secret society, has been told that the master has very special plans for you too. Now, what did he mean by the master? Uh, Satan. And uh, we were interested to hear more about it. And he told us, he says, look, we worship spirits. We worship Lucifer, the Lucifer and all his angels. They're just as beautiful as they did before they were cast out of heaven. He says, there was a misunderstanding in the whole thing. He says, among the inhabitants of the galaxies. And he says, our master was misunderstood. And God did not bear with him like he does with, with people that make mistakes today. So we're in a warfare, good against evil. And we happen to be the evil ones, but we're not that bad. He says, I look at this business between the forces of good and evil. He says, you believe in, in uh, one person believe in God, and everyone believes in Lucifer. It's like politics. So the great controversy mm -hmm. is real. And you heard someone talk about it that's on the other side. Mm -hmm. And to these people, they are sold to the fact that uh, Christ will not return to this planet with power and great glory. He's going to abdicate all claims to the planet because this, the high priest once said that uh, Christ will abdicate all claims to the planet because he knows that it is lawfully and rightfully Satan's. And at, and at that time, he says, so the priest says, well, now, he says, for those of you that are new, <laughs> let me tell you that this is the most feasible way, he says, to please the spirits, is to deride Christ and his people, you know, and his church and all that. So they sing, uh, uh, out of Christian uh, hymnals. They didn't sing Christian words to the hymns, however. Well, they changed, they changed a lot of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. so it's, it's, it's a form of blasphemy. Mm -hmm. Such as you see today in the rock music world, you see the, the entertainers, they have these crosses. Mm -hmm. Ladies got earrings, crosses. Mm -hmm. The guys got crosses. This is a form of blasphemy, a, a form of deriding Christ. You see? Spirits uh, it cause the people to do that, to find pleasure in wearing this type of uh, uh, emblem, which is the, the cross, is the emblem of the crucifixion of Christ and the Christians. Better to reign in hell than serve in heaven, is that it? Why not? I'm here on the ground with my nose in it since the whole thing began. I've nurtured every sensation man has been inspired to have. I cared about what he wanted, and I never judged him. Why? Because I never rejected him. In spite of all his imperfections, I'm a fan of man! I'm a humanist. Maybe the last humanist. Who, in their right mind, Kevin, could possibly deny the 20th century was entirely mine? 